The second scenario we're going to be examining with solving logarithmic equations is when you have a logarithm on both sides of the equation. To do this, we're going to have to apply the property of equality for logarithms, which mathematically is defined as if b is a positive number other than 1, then log base b of x equals log base b of y if and only if x equals y. Now what this means in this little picture to the right is that if you have the same log on both sides, one log on the left, one log on the right, the same exact base, you are taking the log of an expression and you're saying it's equal to log of another expression. Well, you can ignore the logs. Log base b of x equals log base b of y. Since it's the same log, you can just cross them out and just set x equal to y. That's the basic explanation of the property of equality for logarithms. If we look at this example, if we have log base 5 of x equals log base 5 of 8, we can cross out the log base 5s. There's one on the left and one on the right. They're the same exact log. And so that tells me x equals 8. It also works, and that's what if and only if means, both directions. If I state x equals 8, I am allowed to take the log of both sides. And what's going to happen is this will come into play later on for us in this logarithmic unit. So let's try a couple of examples. If I start off with log base 2 of x squared minus 4 equals log base 2 of 3x, I notice I have one log on the left, one log on the right, and it's the same base. So I can go ahead and cross them out and just focus on the fact that that means the expressions I'm taking the log of x squared minus 4 and 3x must be equal to each other. Since this is a quadratic, I'm going to subtract 3x and put it in standard form. So x squared minus 3x minus 4 equals 0. To solve the quadratic, I'm going to factor. The only way to get x squared is x and x. And I want two numbers that multiply to give me negative 4 and add to give me negative 3. And that would be negative 4 and a positive 1. Set each factor equal to 0. x minus 4 equals 0, which means x is 4. x plus 1 equals 0. x is negative 1. Before we circle our answer, what we have to remember is there is a restriction on our logarithms. Remember, if we have log base b of n equals p. That was our general setup for logarithmic form. We had restrictions for b. We said b has to be greater than 0 and b cannot be equal to 1 because that's your base. Your base needs to be positive and it can't be 1. But there is also another restriction is what you're taking the log of n has to be greater than 0 as well. And it's this that we have to keep in mind when we are solving logarithmic equations is your x values, if you plug them into what you are taking the logarithm of, so I am taking the logarithm of x squared minus 4. I am taking the logarithm of 3x. When I plug in my values, these must be positive. So let's check it out. If I have x squared minus 4, if I plug in a 4, I get 4 squared minus 4. Well, that's 16 minus 4, which is 12, so that is positive. So it works for the first one. Let's check for the second one. If I have 3x, which means 3 times 4, that's going to be positive. That tells me this value for x works. And I'm going to do the same thing for negative 1. If I take negative 1 for my x, plug it in, square it, and subtract 4, 1 minus 1 squared, negative 1 squared is 1, 1 minus 4 is negative 3. It's a negative, which it can't be negative. Our definition for logarithms tells us that. So once I get one false, I don't need to check the other one. If it doesn't work for 1, it doesn't matter if I check the other one or not. I can. 3 times negative 1 is negative 3, which is negative. So this one does not work. It creates a false statement compared to our definition of logarithms. So I ignore it. So my only answer is x equals 4. 
so we've dealt with this b being greater than zero and not equal to one, but we have yet to kind of focus on this expression that you're taking the log of has to be greater than zero as well. That comes into play now. You have to check your answers. So let's try the next problem. Log base four of x squared equals log base four of the quantity negative six minus eight. Since I have this same logarithm, the same base, I can ignore it and just focus on my expressions. Set them equal. x squared equals negative six x minus eight. I would move these to the other side by adding. So x squared plus six x plus eight equals zero. To factor it to get my answers. I want numbers that multiply to give me 8 and add to give me 6. So that would be a positive 4 and a positive 2. So to solve, x would be negative 4 here and x equals negative 2 here. We have to check our answers. If I plug in a negative 4, for x in the first expression, I get 16. That's positive, so that works. If I have negative 6 times negative 4 minus 8, that's 24 minus 8, which is 16, which is positive. So I know this one works. If I plug in negative 2, if I square negative, it's going to become positive. If I plug in negative 2, I get negative 6 times negative 2, which is 12. Minus 8 is 4. It's positive. So this time, both of our answers work. x equals negative 4 or x equals negative 2. We had to check our answers to make sure they were true and that they fit this property of logarithms. So let's do one last one. Example number 3. We have log base 12 of x plus 5 equals log base 12 of x squared minus 7. Since they're the same log and base, and there's only one on each side, we can ignore them and just set the expressions equal to each other. x plus 5 equals x squared minus 7. This time I'm going to move everything to the right side since the x squared is positive over here. So I would subtract x, so x squared minus x, and then subtract 5, which is negative 7 minus 5 is negative 12. And again, we're going to factor. We want numbers that multiply to give you negative 12 and add to give you negative 1. That would be a negative 4 and a positive 3. So that tells me x equals 4 or x equals negative 3. But what we have to do is check our answers. If I plug in a 4 into x plus 5, I get 4 plus 5, which is positive, so that one works. If I plug in a negative 3 into x plus 5, negative 3 plus 5 is 2, that's positive, so that works. So I know x equals 4 satisfies our requirements of logarithms. If I have x squared minus 7, if I plug in 4, 4 squared minus 7, 16 minus 7 will be positive, so it works. And if I plug in negative 3, negative 3 squared minus 7 is 9 minus 7, which is positive, which works. And so both of these are our answers, x equals 4 or x equals negative 3. So bottom line for the property of equality of logarithms, it says if you have one log on the left side and one log on the right side, and they're the same base, you can just ignore them and set the expressions equal to each other and solve from there. The key is be sure to check your x values, that they fit the definition of logarithms, that the expression you are taking the logarithm of has to be greater than zero. So after you find your x values, plug them in to see if one of them is true or both of them is true.